Chapter 17 of Among the Meadow People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jennifer Dore. Among the Meadow People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. Chapter 17 Mr. Green Frog and His Visitors. One day, a young frog who lived down by the river came hopping up through the meadow. He was a fine-looking fellow, all brown and green, with a white vest, and he came to see the sights. The oldest frog on the river bank had told him that he ought to travel and learn to know the world, so he had started at once. Young Mr. Green Frog had very big eyes, and they stuck out from his head more than ever when he saw all the strange sights and heard all the strange sounds of the meadow. Yet he made one great mistake, just as bigger and better people sometimes do when they go on a journey. He didn't try to learn from the things he saw, but only to show off to the meadow people how much he already knew. And he boasted a great deal of the fine way in which he lived when at home. Mr. Green Frog told those whom he met that the meadow was dreadfully dry, and that he really could not see how they lived there. He said they ought to see the lovely soft mud that there was in the marsh, and that there the people could sit all day with their feet in water in among the rushes where the sunshine never came and then he said to eat grass as the grasshoppers did if they would go home with him he would show them how to live the older grasshoppers and crickets and locusts only looked at each other and opened their funny mouths in a smile but the young ones thought mr green frog must be right and they wanted to go back with him the old hoppers told them that they wouldn't like it down there and that they would be sorry that they had gone. Still, the young ones teased and teased and teased and teased until everybody said, Well, let them go, and then perhaps they will be contented when they return. At last, they all set off together, Mr. Green Frog and the young meadow people. Mr. Green Frog took little jumps all the way and bragged and bragged. The grasshoppers went in long leaps, the crickets scampered most of the way, and the locusts fluttered. It was a very gay little party, and they kept saying to each other, What a fine time we shall have. When they got to the marsh, Mr. Green Frog went in first with a soft plunk in the mud. The rest all followed and tried to make believe that they liked it. But they didn't. They didn't at all. The grasshoppers kept bumping against the tough, hard rushes when they jumped, and then that would tumble them over on their backs in the mud. And there they would lie kicking their legs in the air until some friendly cricket pushed them over on their feet again. The locusts couldn't fly at all there, and the crickets got their shiny black coats all grimy and horrid. They all got cold and wet and tired, yes, and hungry too, for there were no tender green things growing in among the rushes. Still, they pretended to have a good time, even while they were thinking how they would like to be in their dear old home. After the sun went down in the west, it grew colder still, and all the frogs in the marsh began to croak to the moon, croaking so loudly that the tired little travelers could not sleep at all. When the frogs stopped croaking and went to sleep in the mud, one tired cricket said, If you like this, stay. I am going home as fast as my six legs will carry me. And all the rest of the travelers said, So am I. So am I. So am I. Mr. Green Frog was sleeping soundly, and they crept away as quietly as they could out into the silvery moonlight and up the bank towards home. Such a tired little party as they were, and so hungry that they had to stop and eat every little while. The dew was on the grass, and they could not get warm. The sun was just rising behind the eastern forest when they got home. They did not want to tell about their trip at all, but just ate a lot of pepper grass to make them warm and then rolled themselves in between the woolly mullen leaves to rest all day long. And that was the last time any of them ever went away with a stranger. End of chapter 17